Well, I see an E in whiskey, and that can only mean one thing, isn't that right, Paul? It's time to open the Irish whiskey bar. <laughs> Now, this has been gathering dust for quite some time, yes. hasn't it, Paul? I think we went in March 2023, if I'm not mistaken, or something. Uh, no, like no, no, it's a bit later than that. We went to Northern Ireland in June 2023. June? Yes, it was. Was it June? It was June because it was nice and sunny and warm. It was that one week where they had warm weather. And we went to a famous town called Port Divine. Well, it is famous as Port Divine in the BBC series Hope Street, as we've said several times before in this show. But the actual town itself is Donoghadi, and they have a distillery. It's called Copeland, and they make whiskey, gin, they do gin, do they do vodka as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first time we went in 2022, they'd only just opened, and um, they had some issues with the licensing back then where we weren't able to actually purchase. I think I got some whiskey glasses, two of them, yeah. and then Marcus broke one of them. So, oh, yeah. so then he offered to buy me a new set. Yes, that's right. And everything's open now. It was all open last year when we went. So it was absolutely fabulous to get this bottle. But we haven't opened it since, uh, and that's why it was gathering dust. So I think we should take, before we check the state of the glasses, shall we open the box and bring this on it? It is unlike me not to have whiskey open, right? Oh, well, yes, definitely. I didn't even know that you had this. I'd completely forgotten about it, it so long ago. And while you open the bottle, oh, God. I shall give a little description of what it is. It says, our unique blend. Donica D has been a town of seafarers and traders for centuries. Voyaging Vikings gave our three historic Copeland Islands the name Cap Manijar, meaning Merchant Islands, oh. and used them as a trailing post. The first harbour was built in 1626, the town prospered, and the harbour was rebuilt and extended in 1821, with the famous lighthouse added in 1836. And if you watch Hope Street, you will recognize all these. Mm. And if I can find the file, I might actually slip a little bit of uh, our visit in as well. Mm. Our distillery has created a rare three whiskey, four cask blend, as complex as the remarkable voyages by the landing sailors into the merchant's key. And I'm not going to look at the tasting notes yet because I think that we should probably try it first. Oh, look at this. I hope the glasses have survived. They look quite big. They are, are these, big. These aren't regular. Those oh. are the ones, those are like those large tumbler things. Shall I open it? Is it the same type of glass that we got the last time that I broke? Mm -hmm. The paper looks nice too. I think we should keep this. Oh, it's got a lovely smell off it. It's this paper. So there you go. Yeah, I remember that glass. <laughs> After I smashed it. I don't know what it is, there's something about this paper it has got a real nostalgic kind of smell off it. It almost smells like Christmas it, wrapping like, paper. It almost smells like printing dust. Yeah. Oh, I love this. Maybe, maybe we need to flatten it out. Do you know what? I could get high on this. Oh, God. Yeah, but look, if I come around here, I can show you the paper. So it says it's the from the Copeland Distillery. Donnacadie County Down. Oh. oh, I love this paper so much. So I am wiping it dry. Now this is a very Chinese restaurant type thing that you're doing now. When we go for dim sum, you're always cleaning the cutlery and the crockery. And is that just to make sure that it's clean, Paul? I'm sure the whiskey will clean it out for us. Oh, oh I see, right, okay. Oh, it's very red, this. So this is Copeland Merchant's Key Irish Whiskey X Bordeaux Rum Cask. So there... Uh, so I think that I'm drunk the, already. I think that the Bordeaux Rum Cask will 
color the whiskey in, make oh. it that color, which is where the color comes from. But does it add additional taste to it as well? So I think that we should be tasting some rum elements to it and like some um, amber notes or like some oakiness. I don't know. So it says it's a unique blend of malt and grain whiskies. The alcohol percentage is 46. That's a lot. So it's grain whiskey, virgin oak to rechar bourbon, double distilled malt, American bourbon barrel, triple distilled malt, Oloroso sherry butt, finished in Bordeaux, Grand Cru X Copeland rum barrel. So you're laughing at butt, is that what it is? No, no. I think that mm -hmm. rum, like the rum cask is like a common cask that they use to house the whiskey because that's where they um, put the whiskey in, like, okay. like the ones that were used for rum. And it's aged for how long then? I think that it has it to aged? be. I think it has to be aged for at least what three to five years. Right. I wonder does it say on here. It doesn't say for the Scottish, for the Irish, Irish one. one. Sorry. Oh, is that a thing? But they don't say. Mm, how long? I think that typically the Scottish ones do. But I think that Why? it has to be like maybe three to five years. I'm not sure. I think it's Was a minimum it of three years before it can be called whiskey, is that mm. Yeah. Oh, I think we should look that up. Oh, and we're not getting straight Just through. so that we don't embarrass ourselves. Yes. Oh, I like the fact on the side it says coastal spirit. I'm trying so hard not to look at the tasting notes. And it says... Cut by the ocean, inspired by history. Is that what it said on here as well? Yeah, cut by the ocean, inspired by history. And look, there's boats probably from Donica D from years ago on there too. So what have you discovered, Paul? It has to at least be three years. Yes, I was right. I thought five years, but no. Well, let's get to it then. Why don't you Why open don't the you bottle? Pour? Oh, no, well, I don't know. I don't, I'm not good at opening these bottles. Is it going to make a weird popping sound? No. It's not like champagne. Ooh, nice little. Oh, that's quite a nice, subtle sort of smell of the bottle. Yeah. Ooh, that's quite a large one. Oh, gosh, look at that. That is amber nectar. Mmm. Oh! Splashing everywhere, my dear. Right, okay. Swirl it around a bit, and this is where we check for the legs, is that right? And let's also smell it. It doesn't smell that bad. I mean, sometimes for me, it sends my eyes to the back of my head. Um, but it's quite subtle, the smell. But of course, as I've said on this show before, smell doesn't, al uh, smell doesn't always translate to taste. Do you need some water? I don't know yet. Cheers, my dear. Cheers. I think I I'm think i slurring my words and I haven't even had you a sip. No, wait. You what? should leave it in your mouth for a bit. Do you remember that? Oh, time? right. Oh, okay. Well, just a little sip. Mmm. It's quite fiery, but it's not... It's not overpowering. It... It tastes kind of sweet. It does. It's like a sweet element to it. I think it tastes like nectar, but it tastes mm. kind of. No, I said amber sweet. nectar, didn't I? It tastes kind of fruity somewhat. And would I would I say slightly oaky as well? Did I see that on the tasting notes? I'm not sure. Wood, oak, I see. Okay. Citrus? Mmm. No, like, I kind of want to say that there's like more. Um, Did they cheers? I don't know. They cheered. Cheers. Mm -hmm. I think that you like this one, right? Yeah. You don't hate it. Oh no, no, no! And it's it, it's not one of those. I mean, some, sometimes like, no, I roll no, no, no. like this, but no, it didn't. And and that's a good thing, I think, because don't they want you to enjoy the whiskey, not to be sort of in, be intimidated by it. and kind of um, kind of kind of hating the experience mm. right no i'm not sure if i should add water to this because i would add water to them when i find it like overpowering but this one i don't 
So, so far, we have got <clears throat> nectar, citrus, something sweet. Would you say caramel even? Caramel. And I said woody oak. Uh, I think I need to add some more um, descriptions. Mm -hmm. I well, there were quite a lot maybe, of Maybe... Um, did you say smoky? Well, I said sort of like woody, but um, yeah, you could add smoky to it. It's, it is smoky. Did you add... Um, you run out of words now, Paul. Yeah, what? I think I might have. Ah, uh, well, that's that's why we need to go and look at the tasting notes then and see. So, oh, there's a there's a nose, a palate, and a finish. So, oh, rum. Wow, no, it's more than just rum. This is really interesting because it says the nose is rum and raisin ice cream, which was the ice cream that my mother always used to get, and I never really liked rum and raisin, but I would never have thought of that. I. I did think that it was somewhat sweet. And it says dates and dried fruit. Now the interesting thing is it with, with is it dates mate caramel or toffee or something, or is that fades of the meal? I'm sure it's dates. Anyway, the palate, this oh well I would never have certainly never guessed oh, this. It says citrus. Well it says that the palate is custard and stewed rhubarb with a velvety mouthfeel with spiced orchard fruits. So the citrus is close to the fruits, I suppose. And the finish is candied fruits, oak, and I thought they said mild tinnitus. No, it's mild tannins. <laughs> I've got no idea what that is. Maybe you'd like to tell me. Something that they have in wine. Well, oh, is it a the wine tannins. thing? Tannins? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, right, I'd never heard of tannins. You see, I don't drink no, wine. No, it's really. kind of like the grapes. Like oh, right. So, we were slightly off then with this. I don't know why. Does that mean that we're not whiskey connoisseurs? No, it just means that we need to try some more out. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep drinking it, you mean. Why not? Mm. So, overall, how would oh, you... Too much there. How would you rate this? Oh, this so would like be it. one of my favourites. Yeah. And I think... They do different types of whiskey mm. because it says this one. Yes. This is Merchant's Key. That is the particular one. This is only one, one of them. Yeah. They yeah. also had other types of whiskey, which I think I might consider buying next time. Oh, there's a next time. <laughs> why, why not? <laughs> not that easy to get to Donica Day, is it? Well, it's outside. You need to drive. Yeah, it's outside Bangor. Um, and we went um, last year. We went on, it was our last day actually in oh, Ireland. Yeah. And we. Weren't we flying back? Yeah, well, we had quite quite a journey because um, we went from Donica D, and we, I remember leaving at about quarter past one in the afternoon, and we had to. Or maybe it was a quarter past twelve. Anyway, we had to drive down to Porta Ferry, and that's where we got the battered sausage. That had been after the whole time that we were there. Were we leaving that day? Yeah, because. Um, Donica Day is at the top of the Ard like Peninsula down. and Port of Ferry is at the bottom so we went the whole way down and then the whole way up again. I think we went down one way and up the other and then to get to Belfast City Airport it's not that far beyond um, mm, Bangor. Um, yeah, you, it's about, what is it, 10 miles from Bangor or something like that. You can correct me if I am wrong. In the comments. Yes, in the comments. And I'm from Northern Ireland, but not from that bit, so that's why. I can tell you that it's six miles from Ballymoney to Corley, and there you go. It depends, of course, where you measure the outskirts of the towns to and from. Don't be too picky, people. Mmm. Okay. Well, have a little look at this, and we will be back in a moment. We have come to Port Divine, and if you are a fan of the BBC drama series Hope Street, you will be very familiar with this area. But Port Divine doesn't actually exist. We are in 
Donica D. When you walk around Donica D, you will see many of the locations for filming, including Pier 36, Lounge Bar, and Off License. And on the show, it's called The Commodore. When we visited last year, we went to the Copeland Distillery and it had only just opened its doors, so they weren't doing tours at the time. They weren't selling any of the booze either. Oh, that's right. But they are now, which means that we are able to stock up on some of their gin. We visited Copeland Distillery last year. It wasn't open at that point. Um, but now it is open and I think we need to go in and get some of the merch and product. It isn't just gin that they do, they also do rum and whiskey and I bought this nice bottle of blended Irish whiskey in a rum cask. Let's have a look. Oh wow. Look at that. And I broke your Copeland glass from last year so we have replaced it and you also got what's in that little package? A flask. Ah. Which I could have used this week. Oh well, you've got it for the future. Okay. Where's the receiver? This is a very strange phone box. Oh. Why can't I not make a call? Hello, where's the phone? It's on this side. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Hello? Oh, yes, you'd like to subscribe. It's Paul and Martha's on YouTube. I'm going up, but I'm trying to get this house at the right Yes, I am really glad that you did like this. Yes, you said that you thought that I might. Why is that? Why do I do that? So that I can have the pass. <laughs> no, but there, you would, you would hope that I didn't like them then. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I think when it comes to whiskey, you're very Pick funny. Me. Yeah, like some of them you're like... Oh. Yeah, I'll tell you what I don't like. I don't like those rice type, like Japanese um, type whiskeys. I'm not so fast on them. The grainy. The yeah, the, the grainy ones. Yeah, those are like the Asian ones. Oh, right. Okay, nothing against them. It's just, you Japanese know, it's just the ones. Is. The Japanese ones are going to taste like that because of the byproduct. Oh, what is the byproduct? Because of the grain. Like oh, right. Beef, because over here it's barley. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, it's, it's, it's like grain based or barley based. Oh, you do know your whiskey, don't you? I I know some. Things. Mm. Well, we hope that you enjoyed our little outing at the bar today. And if you did like what you saw, give us a thumbs up. Better yet, why not hit the subscribe button because it will help us on our YouTube journey this year because we do want to reach a thousand or maybe two thousand. Subscribe, we're, we're heading for two thousand now, are we? Well, why not? Goodness. Better yet, yes. why not buy us a coffee? Yeah, not a whiskey yet. We have a coffee. Yet. Don't buy us alcohol. No, no, no. no, don't, no. don't buy us a pint. Don't buy us a pint. I don't think that's a lie. Buy us a coffee, coffee, please. And there's a link in the description. So we are going to finish this off, not the bottle, just the glass, <laughs> and we will see you next time. Bye! Bye. Bye. <laughs> Why am I talking like this? I'm off in the drink, it's gone straight to my head. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh.